Hey everyone, another install video here. I'm going to be adding an external cell booster antenna. It's a pointing, which I'll show you in a little while. I know a lot of people do the Wii Boost, so this would apply in the same way, really, everything I'm doing. So I'm going to be mounting the antenna back here in this region somewhere. The cable is going to run back here and then down into this channel over and across. And I've taken off this rear light and backup camera assembly. It's just two screws. Those two screws just pop out. I actually just got them in here temporarily so I don't lose them. But the antenna cable is going to run long. I'm going to notch a little hole out in the back of this bracket and then chase the wires in through this hole to get them inside. And I'll probably glue them with adhesive sealant along here and up to where the antenna is mounted. Then looking inside, I removed this piece of panel trim here and actually also had to remove this piece of wood that was up here. So this piece of wood screws up on the ceiling. I actually, I took a Sharpie and I, I drew three lines. So I know exactly I'm gonna put it back up in the right orientation, but this comes out, those three screws, after you get the panel trimmed down. And so the panel trim, same thing. It just comes out with screws. There's, there's a few little felt cover pieces that you pop off, but that exposes us this back area. So when I pass the wiring in, I'll be able to grab it here and then I'm going to run it along to here, drill an entry hole over here somewhere. Haven't figured that out yet. I'll show you guys in a little bit and then get inside this cabinet and run it forward to where our router is. And hopefully it'll all go pretty smoothly. I will definitely have to remove the, the microwave to get the wires run behind it and then forward to this cabinet behind the TV, which is where we have our router, router and the NAS, the network attached storage. So we have a whole bunch of movies and media on there. But yeah, here we go. Okay, up here on the roof, just figuring out where I'm gonna put the antenna. I have this bracket that pivots. And so I've found a nice flat spot on this corner right here. So I can drill my holes and I'm gonna do a glue and screw, we call it in, well, in our shop, but it's gonna be screwed down with self tappers to the sheet metal and then also a fairly large amount of adhesive sealant. Winnebago seems to use a similar technique with a lot of stuff and it obviously works, works well. So lots of adhesive and then this will pivot down so the antenna will be able to stow forwards here when not in use. And we may do a little bit of like a shock cord or something around the antenna to this bracket here if we have any vibration issues but we'll see we'll do a test run see how it does so yeah got my drills adhesive sealant and screws gonna get this mounted and then the antenna cable run is gonna go back through this little bracket here out the side down and into the back of the van as I said earlier here we go okay so holes are drilled I have a bunch of adhesive sealant on the bracket there's the four holes 11 64th was the drill bit size for these number 12 self tappers by the way that may, gives a nice bite but not not too much and so now i'm going to place the bracket in its position above the holes and then take each screw and put a little bit of sealant on it so that it seals really nicely i, I mean i'd rather use too much but a nice blob of sealant maybe actually a little more than that on each screw and then place them in their holes I would much rather have some sealant bubbling out the sides and, and clean that up than have too little and have water inside the van 100% every time rather too much and too little so gonna get this tightened down and then move on to mounting the antenna and running the wiring bracket is mounted I installed the antenna just to double check the fit but you can see there's a nice good bead of sealant all the way around the side and all the screws have some that oozed up when I tighten them down so plenty of sealant on there and then this bracket works by you just lift the lever put the bracket upright a little tricky to do that one-handed and then clamp it so then it's good for when we're not moving obviously when we're on the road we will be holding it flat and I do think 
even with it clamped, it's not, it's gonna vibrate. So we'll take a piece of bungee, shock cord, and just shock cord this over to here when we're on the road that will stop it from vibrating around. I may end up doing some kind of tie strap to tie it down, straight down like that, but we'll see, we'll test it out. Okay, so I decided to move inside for this portion. I think it's gonna be easier to run the cable from the source at the router here forward through the microwave compartment and then the closets. A little bit of chaos in here because we emptied out the closets for this. But yeah, basically I'm going to figure out a run through that sidewall, probably just drill a quarter inch hole, remove the microwave, slide that out so I can see behind it. And then I'm gonna have to drill another hole, probably in the bottom corner down there, behind that, and then run the cable along the bottom edge up and out and then out the back where that light's hanging and then up onto the up onto the roof. But we'll see how that goes. Okay, so 15 minutes later, this was a little bit of a fiddle. This is the cabinet behind the TV. Cable is run to here. That short little run is a challenge. I've had to deal with that area before and I actually have half a mind to cut an access port back here or back there because I have no idea what exactly is even behind there. I'm thinking just wiring and maybe some ducting but it's annoying that there's just no way to see what's going on back there anyway so cable is run through this portion my next challenge it's really easy if i just drill a hole and then run it visibly in the back of this closet which i might do but i'm first going to try push the fish up or behind here and get all the way behind and fish it out on the far end which would make the wiring run totally invisible which would be nice so we'll see that was actually way easier this, this long run all the way back here, way easier than this short run between these two cabinets. So I do have the fish through. Quick little tip is this is my messenger fish right here. So I've got a nice long, about six inch long area overlapped and taped with electrical tape. With a nice taper on the end, I take past the end of the wire and then onto the fish wire itself and then come all the way past the little hook that's on the end of the fish and taper this end off nicely. And then I actually fold the tape over here on the very end with a little flap, just so it makes it easy to unpeel when I get to the other side instead of having to cut it or really pick at it. So now I should be able to pull this through pretty easy. Seems to be a nice free run that will get us all the way to the back of the van to get ready to go out at that awesome. um, It's pulled through super easy. So now I'm at the back of the van here. Cable comes out there. Sorry to my lovely wife. I had her empty that entire closet and thought that I was going to need access there but thankfully not and in the end it's it's a win cable does just to show you the full run there's the exposed cable back here I'm going to zip tie this probably down to oh I'll zip tie it to there just to keep it from flopping around and then comes out of this cabinet and I still need to put an end on it and leave a little service loop so I have enough room for any potential modifications in future or moving the router or something. So now I'm just going to use my hands and just pass the the wire back here through all these until I can poke it out. I'm not sure if you can see or not, but there's some holes for the wiring there to get it out and to the back of the van. Okay, so it's relatively easy to pass the wire from the inside get through those holes and then out through the back to where I'm standing. And then here's the light and I'll show you what I did. So there's the camera here and the rear light to the, the white cable there passes out. And then I did notch, let's see if I can do this. I did notch right here, just with a knife. It cuts really easily. I notched out the plastic because this ridge runs along. I notched it out so the wire can sit down in there. And then I did notch out the bottom of the light too, right here. You can see, I just kind of, scraped away at that with a knife blade so that now the light can sit in there cleanly and i push all the wires out of the way but i'll get the screws back in that thing and it will be secure and then the light wiring is run down in that trench and it's going to go up to the antenna so this part doesn't look super neat and tidy yet i got tape taping it off but so i've used a little bit of sealant down here to pin the wire down. Once that dries, I'll probably add some more just to tie it up a little bit, but it's going to get glued in there. For instance, that corner, I'll need to clean that up. A little blob before and after that bracket pass through. But all in all, from down below, it's almost invisible. 
can see the wire coming out there. So now it's just a case of getting end connections put on and doing configuration, but the, the hard work is done. Okay, so Finn is going to ease the clamp, lower the antenna down, notch it into the bracket. I just made this bracket out of plastic. Hold it up for a second, Finn. So this is just made out of uh, starboard marine grade plastic and zip tied to the frame. And so it lowers down, let's, let's see it then, lowers down, latch the clamp down, and then we have one of these rapid Velcro straps that we do nice and tight when we're on the road. There we go. So when we're on the road, this can't rattle around. It's nice and captive. And then, yeah, it's the reverse process. Undo the clamp, stand it up, clamp it down, and there we go. Then we take this back.